took my art journal outside into the late summer sunshine for a bit of a play session today and my favourite way to start playing as you can see here is with collage. I'm keeping it fairly neutral because this is a bottom layer on my page but I've added some lovely butterflies that I found in a book at a car boot sale. Now I'm adding some gesso to blend all this into the background and unfortunately my gesso was a little bit old and thick and a little bit too opaque for my liking. So you'll see me rubbing off areas using a baby wipe um, to bring back some of those underneath patterns and pictures from the collage. It might seem like a shame to cover up everything that was going on on the page there, but this is the way that we build up layers of interest and texture in the background and some of those layers will even be visible in the final piece. Hello, if we haven't met before, my name is Jenna Byrne and I love to help people encounter God through mixed media art journaling. Welcome to my channel. I hope you have a good look around. There's over a hundred videos here to inspire you. But my hope is that you wouldn't just uh, enjoy watching what I do. You would like to get stuck in and try this for yourself. If that's of interest to you, you might want to check out my online course, which is called Wild Art Deep Faith. Head to my website, jennaburton.com to find out more. I realised I didn't have anything to get the paint out of the pot with here, so I used a feather. That is uh, not intentional, it was just what I happened to have handy at the time. So I'm adding some turquoise coloured paint here, and again I'm struggling with it being a little bit too dark and a little bit too opaque, so again I've picked up my trusty baby wipe and I'm using that to blend the colour into the page. The layer of gesso that I did is still wet so um, it's easy to create more of a pastel tone by blending on the page like I'm doing here. This is some acrylic ink in, I think, olive green and I love to put some acrylic ink on the page and then spritz it with water. Uh, as you can see the colour spreads around and moves in a really organic way and I'm just using my finger as well to dot that ink around. Acrylic inks really are fun to play with like this. Um, here comes the feather again and I'm drawing into the ink and dragging it up um, to make these lines. And I'm just playing with the art supplies at this point in time. But this was the moment when I started to get a vision for this page. I could definitely see some kind of a landscape emerging here with the blue um, which could be sky or could be water and the green which um, is starting to look like grass and plants. I'm just uh, spraying that ink again to move it even further up the page. And I'm reminded of a lovely post I read on Facebook a few days ago about Moses in his basket. And all of a sudden this page uh, has become to me a, a river with reeds and uh, other plants in the riverbed. And I can just imagine a little Moses hiding in there amongst all that foliage. So I decide to make a little Moses. Um, I'm, I've brought out my bag of fabrics 
and I'm just chopping them up and playing with them to see uh, which ones I feel will go on the page. And I'm beginning to think about how Moses' mother must have felt as she made this basket and covering it with tar to make it waterproof. And she's going to put her beloved baby in this vessel and send him out onto the water to who knows what fate. Is this basket going to be his lifeboat or is it going to be his coffin? She must have thought there was a good chance he wasn't going to survive, but she was doing all she could to protect him. And that is good and right, but there is a limit to what we can do to protect those we love. I've cut this little basket shape out of some hessian, it was an old rice bag and I am adding some stitching. Uh, I'm not really thinking about the plan, um, stitching for me is very meditative and just a chance to really think. I've got some brown embroidery thread and I'm making these long stitches. But when I finished, I decide that it's not quite looking baskety enough for me yet. Um, I decide to add some backstitch along the outside just to strengthen it a bit and then I thought what if I actually did some weaving and this is the opportunity to really reflect on what Moses mother must have been feeling um, how she was so desperate to do everything that she could to protect her son and to think about some of the things that I do and have done to protect things that I care about, to protect my own children, um, to protect perhaps uh, projects and passions and to protect myself. So I'm taking some bits of thread, some bits of ribbon, some bits of raffia and wool, anything that I've got handy and going in and out and in and out of those long stitches to make a little woven basket which I'm quite pleased with by the time it's finished. So here we are, here's my little Moses basket that I have created with a bit of haphazard weaving and I'd like to include some fabric behind it, I think, but maybe not quite as much as this. Some of the bits of collage fabrics I have pulled out actually have some personal resonance with me. So the bit I'm holding at the moment was part of a shirt that my first daughter wore when she was a tiny baby and the doilies were um, at my gran's house so they used to belong to my gran and sometimes it feels a bit sad to cut these things up but um, we can't keep everything and um, actually putting them in my journal on a journal page is a way of me preserving them um, in a way that I'll understand and they're particularly precious in this context because I'm thinking about protection and I'm thinking about how I protected my daughter when she was a tiny baby and continue to um, think about how I want to keep her safe from the world but the problem is I can't keep her safe from the world of course she's growing up she's nearly about to be 11 and uh, she will need to face the world by herself and um, in the same way as 
uh, Moses' mother had to let Moses go, we have to, in varying degrees at, at different times, let our children go. Also thinking of my gran um, and the way that she was an influence on my life, praying for me. She was one of the only Christians in my life who would have given me spiritual protection when I was growing up. Um, and that's something we can always do for our children and grandchildren and loved ones, is uh, protect them with prayer. I'm writing out in my journal a passage by Ashley Woods that puts it far more eloquently. There comes a time, many times actually, in the lives of our children where we have to put the basket in the water. We have to let go and trust the plan of the Father. The world is a scary place, a place where we fear our children could drown. But we must remember that we have to let it go so that God can draw them from the waters for his great purpose. He has called us to be their parents, but they were his first. My friend, whatever water you may be getting ready to put your basket into, remember you have to put them in the water for God to draw them out and place them in his perfect plan. Though you might not be physically present with your child as much during the next phase of life, you can always petition the heart of the Father on their behalf. My friend um, Anne gave me this gorgeous tissue paper at the weekend. She knows I'm an art journaler and um, she'd saved it for me. Isn't it lovely? And it's got these golden crowns on it. I'm so excited about it. And I thought it'd be great to stick some of this on the page because obviously the next part of the story is that Moses gets adopted into royalty, which, what a result. Um, he doesn't just get found by anyone, he gets picked up by the princess of Egypt. Which is just amazing, isn't it? And he gets eventually taken into the palace to live like a prince, to be a prince. And that was God's plan all the way along, that he would know he would have an, um, not only safety, but beyond safety, he would have an amazing upbringing, an education, everything that he could possibly want, really. And this is our journey too, isn't it? We were lost at sea, we were vulnerable and by ourselves and yet God chose us and decided to bring us into his royal family and we have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry Abba Father and we get to live out our lives as sons and daughters of the king. So I just want to bring back some colour now. I'm going to bring back some of this gorgeous green that I loved so much. And then I'm going to introduce a few more other colours as well. But I'm going to do the green to start with. I'm just going to do that with a brush. Maybe quite a thin brush. idea of the uh, bulrushes, that's what the word I'm looking for, that you get in rivers. So when we're thinking about this story of Moses in the basket, we can think about it as God's protection 
we can think about all the things that we do to protect our loved ones, which are all good, uh, but ultimately we have to let them go into God's protection so that God's purposes can be fulfilled. We can also think about God's protection of us. We can look back over our lives and think about our testimony of all the times that God has protected us, either directly or by putting other loving people in our lives. And finally, we can think about this story as a picture of Jesus because God the Father took the ultimate risk of letting go of his beloved son to come down from heaven to earth on a rescue mission to save mankind. And heaven must have seemed like such a place of safety compared to earth. In fact, God knew that Jesus was not going to have a great time down here. He was going to ultimately suffer and die. But that was all part of God's purposes for him. For he would rise again on the third day and conquer death. If we give our lives to Jesus, then we are hidden in him. So as he passes through the grave from death into life, so our souls are redeemed from death into life too. And we celebrate this as Christians through the ritual of baptism, where we go down into the water and come up again into new life. And I was thinking also that this Moses story is a picture of baptism. So there's so much to ponder here, folks, isn't there? Um, I'm just doing some little doodles here, some little um, marks. They look a bit like little flying insects. I can still see my butterflies in the background on the page. And that reminds me of transformation. And the story of Moses tells us that the only route to transformation is through the waters. I've also got these. These are um, watercolours, neon watercolours, um, by Paul, someone, Paul Rubens. Um, and they are such cool colours. And we'll really brighten up. I'm just going to use my finger again, actually, just to add some spots of colour. super bright. As you can see folks there is so much depth you can get from just one Bible story that we all learned about in Sunday school. Um, if you take the time just to sit with it and meditate with it and Doing art journaling is just my most favourite way to do that. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to find out for yourself how to do art journaling to enrich your faith and go deeper with God, then I do have an online course that you might be interested in. It's called Wild Art Deep Faith. And it really is a, an A to Z um, comprehensive course to get you started in this practice. So if that's something you might be interested in, then head over to my website, jennaburn.com to find out more. Okay, so finally we just need to stick on 
our little basket that we wove using some Fabri-Tac to do this. I've got this little circle here and I wondered if that could double as a little halo, something like that. Hello. Hello. Is my daughter home from school? Hi. Mama? Yeah. You alright? Yeah, I'm alright. Are you alright? No, I'm fine. What is the basket that you need to put into the water? Perhaps it's yourself, perhaps you need to trust God that he will take you to where you need to be. Perhaps it's your loved ones that you need to entrust into God's hands. Perhaps it's a project, a ministry, something at work, an ambition, a hope or a dream that you need to let go. You've done everything you can to prepare, but now it's in God's hands. I hope this video has inspired you to think about letting go in creative ways. If you've enjoyed it, then please do make sure you like the video, leave me a comment, and if you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button to support my channel. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.